you did not pull up to the crime scene tape on Trescott Drive? No, 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 no. Welcome back to Presume Legal. I am Misha Janice, an attorney licensed in both New York and Florida. Today, we're continuing in our series where we rewatch testimony from the three past trials in the murders, uh, in the murder of Dan Markell. Three trials, one topic, one witness. The heat's on Wendy Adelson. Again, as we watch her testify about her visit to the scene of the crime. Let's go. And did you make any stops between leaving your residence and going to the liquor store? Did I, maybe I purchased gas? Uh, I don't know if you did or not, but I'm referring to your visit to the crime scene. I did not visit the crime scene. Okay. You did not pull up to the crime scene tape on Trescott Drive? No. I was driving on Centerville Road and sometimes I would take the shortcut through Trescott. Yes, ma'am. But when I was driving on Centerville Road, I saw some sort <laughs> of tape or obstruction and so I didn't turn. Okay. On the way to run your errands, did you go by the crime scene? No. On the way to run your errands, did you encounter a roadblock on Trescott? I did. All right, so you did turn off of Centerville onto Trescott. I did. All right, and when you encountered a roadblock, what did you assume the problem was there? I figured it was just an electrical storm or something. There was some, some tape um, and it looked like the road was blocked off. And so I just turned around and went back and went up Benton. And had there been an electrical storm that morning? I didn't remember an electrical storm, but in the summertime, there's always trees falling and rainstorms, so pretty normal. Did you go to the crime scene or very near the crime scene on your way from your residence to, I guess, to lunch or to wherever you were going next? No, I did not. So you never turned on Trescott Drive that day? I went to turn on Trescott Drive, but I saw that it had been blocked off by some tape. And so mm -hmm. I just kept driving on Centerville. Okay. And when you, you had to turn around at the tape, right, to go back out? I think I tried to turn right and it couldn't turn. So I would have made like a the kind of turn, like a K turn and kept going. Was there a roadblock there with? There was tape. Yeah. And an officer was there? I didn't a, see an officer, but I did see a car. A, a law enforcement marked mm -hmm. vehicle? Okay. Did you have any contact with the officer? No. Okay. Did you do anything after that to try to find out what was going on down that roadway? No, I just assumed it was weather, or maybe a tree fell. Had there been bad weather that day? No, but it was summertime and there's electrical storms and trees fall. So that would have been pretty normal for summertime. Did you know what was going to happen, but maybe not know the details? I knew nothing. Is that why you went to the crime scene on the day of the homicide? I did not go to the crime scene on the day of the homicide. The first thing I want to point out is how Wendy decides to define certain words. A lot has been said about her use of specific words or phrases or how she answers a particular question using her own terminology to, in effect, not answer the question that was asked, rather give us the answer she wants us to hear. We have an example of that in each of the three trials where she's asked about her visit to the crime scene. Apparently, Wendy's definition of visiting the crime scene means pulling up all the way in a vehicle, getting out, walking to the epicenter of the crime, maybe putting on those, uh, those blue booties, getting some rubber gloves on, you know, really getting the lay of the land, seeing what the crime was about, rubbing shoulders with the detectives and with the crime scene unit. Apparently that's her definition of visiting the crime scene. And that's why she repeatedly says she never did that. Now, I understand why she's being asked that question. As a former civil litigator myself, it's important when, when we're presenting a case to inform the jury and dare I say, plant ideas in the minds of the jury. And when that's done, it doesn't even really matter what the witness responds with. It's enough knowing that the jury has heard the question as you phrased it and that they can run with the inference. So here, 
regardless of what Wendy says, the jury is already thinking, oh my God, she went to the, the scene of the crime? Whether it was intentional or happenstance, this woman, the ex-wife of the deceased, went out of her way off the beaten path to go do a looky-loo at the crime scene and then proceed to deny it and then diminish the fact that she actually was there. It's just wild. So when asked the question phrased to her liking in 2019, Wendy says she did not turn off Centerville Road onto Trescott Drive. Now, we know the evidence does not support Wendy's 2019 testimony. Dan's house is approximately eight tenths of a mile, so almost one mile in from Centerville Road where she was driving. Officer Brannon, who testified at the trials, he was stationed by Dan's house. He identified Wendy's car, pull up within visual distance of the crime scene, and do a U-turn to head back towards Centerville Road. She could not have seen the crime scene tape while driving on Centerville Road. Trescott Drive is very windy, and the, the crime scene tape was almost one mile in from Centerville Road. In 2022, Wendy admitted that, yes, she did turn off of Centerville Road onto Trescott Drive and drove close enough to the crime scene to see the tape and law enforcement vehicle. In 2023, she was asked if she went to the crime scene or very near the crime scene. and She denied it. She repeated what she said in 2019, that she saw tape blocking off Trescott from Centerville Road. So she did not even turn on to Trescott. But then she was asked about turning around. And she said, yeah, I turned right on to Trescott, but had to turn around to get back to Centerville. If she never turned onto Trescott, there'd be no need for her to turn around. So all in all, very convoluted, very, you know, contradicting testimony about what she actually did in her 2023 testimony. Georgia did not press her for better answers or follow up with clarifying questions. So I'm still unsure about what her testimony is from 2023. Now, just to widen the context, let's look at Wendy's police interview. Obviously, this is not sworn testimony, but it is important to look at because it's the closest in time account from Wendy's own mouth of what she did that very day. In fact, just a few hours before the the recording was taken. Yeah. Okay, and you went down which road you said? I went down Trescott. Okay. I saw a police car there, and I just thought it's blocked so I just turned around and drove um drove to uh I went down the rest of Centerville went up Benton took Benton across went to ABC Liquors bought the bourbon I'm a little confused you're up on up on Centerville Road what's your purpose of driving down Trescott it's usually the shortcut to get to Monroe to get to Monroe? I usually take it as a cut through to get to Thomasville or Monroe. Okay, all right, so you- I don't know why I said Monroe, I was thinking Mosaic, Monroe, to Thomasville. Okay, so when you come down into town on Centerville? I almost always cut through Trescott. Trescott and just drive by your old house? Well, I, I do it as a way of like coming to terms with the divorce, but yeah, I, sometimes I drive there. If I'm too sad, I drive around. Okay. If the kids aren't home and I know they're not home, I feel better about driving by the house, but yeah, it's shorter and I just, usually drive by. It's shorter than going all the way down to Benton. All the way down Centerville and around Benton. Just right. a shortcut I always took. Okay, so you, you turned around and went back to Centerville, I take it? Yeah. Down to Benton and went to the liquor store down there on Thomasville? Yeah. The one at Benton Road? ABC Liquors, it's at, yeah, at Benton. Mm-hmm. Okay. I was driving up the street and I saw like the tape And I just thought, oh, maybe there's like an electrical outage or something. Like I saw the street blocked. I was driving into town. I was running errands. I was meeting some friends for lunch. And I drove up Trescott because it's the shortcut. (laughs) And so I drive up Trescott and I see the tape. And I was like, hmm, I guess there was like an electrical outage. Because sometimes we'd have trees that would fall or whatever. And so I turned around and didn't think anything of it. I was at lunch with two friends and the officer shows up. I think for me, a part of why she's so unbelievable is the cover story for why she drove down Trescott and her
her assumption of why the crime scene tape and law enforcement vehicles were blocking the road to begin with. She told De Detective Isom in the, uh, in the police interview, and anyone else who would listen, that Trescott is a shortcut. First of all, it's not a shortcut. In fact, with its winding roads, slower speed limit, and multiple speed bumps, it's a longer route than staying on the main road, Centerville. There's a great video uh, that the Society Page channel made mapping out the routes. I encourage you to watch it if you've not already, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. She also told Detective Isom that she drove by Dan's house to come to terms with the divorce that she initiated. This, despite the fact that doing so runs the risk of seeing Dan, who she was trying to avoid like the plague. In fact, in that very interview, she explained how she went to Whole Foods the week of the murder with the boys for dinner. If you don't know, Whole Foods is a grocery store and they often have cafes inside. Um, you know, with food buffets and, you know, smoothie station, whatever. So she went in to Whole Foods for dinner with the boys, but she spotted Dan inside. He didn't see them. So she turned around, hightailed it out of there and took the boys elsewhere for dinner. She did not want to see him or run into him. So her story of driving by the house with the risk of seeing him or worse, him spotting her is not believable to me. It's just not. Second, I believe she came up with the electrical storm, fallen tree assumption because she realized she'd been spotted at the crime scene and she needed to have an explanation for why she did not pursue answers. Now, I could be wrong, but crime scene tape and law enforcement vehicles do not equate with a fallen tree in the street to me. What would? I don't know. Orange cones, the big FPL, that's our Florida Power and Light, our power company here in Florida. They have these huge trucks with big ladders and buckets for the men to reach the power lines. Maybe even a construction vehicle capable of moving large tree trunks, but crime scene tape? No. Finally, the fact that she didn't think anything of it is also untenable to me. She explained to the Zach of Isom that earlier that morning, she and Dan were basically playing phone tag. He had called her and left a message, then followed up with a text message. She texted him back, but thought it was strange that Dan hadn't responded or called her back. So she sent an email to him to follow up but she was still expecting a call from him because they needed to confirm some time sensitive plans about the kids. She explained that it was weird that he had not called her back. So in my opinion, and I could be in the minority here, but if I'm expecting to hear from somebody and I don't hear from them so much so that I think it's weird that they haven't responded or called me back. And then I drive down their street and see police tape and police cars and their street is blocked off near their house. It's unfathomable to me to not have a single concern about what's going on, to not make the smallest connection in my mind between the two things. But maybe that's just me, I don't know. What are your thoughts? What do you think? Let me know down below. And don't forget to please like the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I have much more in the works and I'd hate for you to miss any of it. Okay, until the next drop, peace.